Hey everybody, it's me, Megan. Welcome to my channel, Journey to Parenthood. Um, if this is your first time watching, welcome. Um, if you haven't watched any of my other videos, I encourage you to go back and check out the videos that I've posted. Um, over the last several years, I've talked about infertility and foster care, and um, we've adopted two little boys through foster care. And then um, I think about the last five, six months has specifically been about IVF. Um, we recently posted a, a video, I'm not sure what day I actually posted it, but it was from December 12th, 2016, so shortly before Christmas and the New Year, and it was our embryo transfer. So if you haven't watched that, I encourage you to go back and watch it. I'll link it right here for you. Um, but I have yet to make an update video on whether or not our transfer was successful or not. So I've been trying to, I've been going back and forth in my head, like how can I do this video? I had taken some footage that I thought I would use, but I just kind of felt like it was just too, for me, I was not ready to share it with, I'm not ready to share it with everybody. Um, but I am ready to share with you all what has happened since. Our embryo transfer um, so basically we did our embryo transfer and within the first two days I was starting to feel some of the things they said to expect to feel um, which was like little cramping and twinges and bloating and um, I even had like one of the nights I felt really sick um, and with um, the transfer I did it was a frozen embryo transfer so and we put two in so with that um, basically when you're putting in the embryo, they're already like five, one of mine was five days, one of mine was six days, developed. Um, so when they put it in, it's already just a few days after that, you're already technically seven or eight days in to a possible pregnancy. Um, so it's kind of confusing because you're gonna be able to recognize symptoms and test a lot earlier. Um, in the video, you'll notice um, in our transfer video, our doctor asks, do you want to be a part of a study I'm doing? And that study is that he's going to start testing as soon as day five um, after transfer. So, of course, we said yes, because how awesome would that be if we could surprise everybody? Because they're all expecting it to be more like 10 to 12 days um, before we before we know anything. So we thought it would be an awesome way to surprise them. Um, so we agreed to do that. So I was having symptoms and everything. And then the day before our five day beta blood test, um, at late at night, I was like, Ooh, maybe I should test because I've been hearing some girls, I wasn't going to test at home, but I kept seeing girls on my, um, on a group that I'm part of that they were testing at four days and getting positives. So I was like, you know what, why not? Tomorrow's our blood test, and if it's negative, it doesn't mean it's really negative necessarily, because even our doctor said on day five, your blood test might be negative, but you could still be positive, but that's part of the test that he's, or the study that he's doing, to see how early he can get those positives and give results to everybody. So he's kind of just testing a lot of people and seeing what the overall results for like accuracy, I guess, were for day five, and then every two days after that. Um, Sorry, maybe I'm explaining too much. But um, anyway, so we went um, and we decided to get a home pregnancy test. And I took it and we like went to look at it together and we even videoed it. And this is some of the footage that I'm not ready to share. Um, and basically we pulled it out and it was dark white. Like, not even, couldn't even imagine a line. Um, so... I kind of was feeling nervous at that point, but telling myself, like, yeah, it doesn't really necessarily mean anything because plenty of women don't get their positive tell a little bit further, and we'll see what the blood test says tomorrow. So we did our blood test, and then I got a call later, just a few hours after it, that basically said that technically the test was negative. Like, the number was so low, like below actual one but still like a point something like there was hcg but so they said doesn't necessarily mean anything but at the same time a lot of the women who've been in the study by this point are getting you know number like real numbers on their hcg test so my heart kind of dropped at that point but i held on to hope because they said not to give up quite yet um so two days later 
Um, I went back in for another blood test. And this time they told me that the number hasn't changed and that it's still showing as negative. And basically that they test one more time, but that it wasn't looking very good. So that basically what happened was that they told us we weren't pregnant um, and that they didn't expect anything to change, but that they test one more time. Um, I pretty much knew in my heart what the real result result was going to be. So at that point, I pretty much broke down. Um, I went in my bathroom. My kids, thankfully, were sleeping. <laughs> if they weren't, I don't know how I would have handled this. It's like God knew I needed it moment by myself. Um, so I went in my bathroom and I literally like fell on the floor and just cried. Which was like, it's like, I'm, I don't know. It's hard for me to like say that out loud because I'm not somebody who like falls to their knees crying very much. Um, like I might cry when I'm tired, but not like be extremely vulnerable to the point of like audibly crying on the floor. But that's where I was because I knew at that point that we weren't pregnant. And um, for those of you who follow our journey, you know that those were our two only embryos. Um, and that it took us months and months and more months than usual for a frozen embryo transfer because of surgeries that had gone wrong and we had to repair. So basically, we at that point needed to tell our family because they still didn't know that we had even tested yet. Um, so that was probably the hardest thing of all this <laughs> was, you know, telling our family. So I, I literally couldn't even call my mom and dad to tell them. Like, I couldn't do it. All day I avoided it. My husband got home and he's like, have you called them yet? I'll do it with you. And I kept being like, let's do it later. Let's do it later. Let's wait till the kids go to bed. So we waited till they went to bed. I kept avoiding it because I was just like so... I'd been crying all day, all day, and I just, I don't know why I had such an overwhelming fear and sadness to tell them that we actually already tested and that we weren't pregnant. So my husband, being awesome, he called my parents, put it on speakerphone, and he did the talking because I couldn't. I literally couldn't talk. Um, so he was on the phone with them, and he basically explained the situation and that the doctor said that, you know, they're going to test one more day, but that we aren't probably pregnant. And, you know, at this point, I really knew I wasn't because I had no symptoms. Anything that I had been having kind of just disappeared. Um, and then finally, I was able to kind of talk. And when I did, I just bawled. And my mom bawled and my dad bawled, which is a big deal. <laughs> and we all just kind of cried and Josue cried. And, and then we had to do the same thing with his mom and call her and talk about it. So... It was really emotional, and then my grandparents happened to be in town, and so, you know, the next, that night, or the next day, I believe it was, the next day, um, some of them came over and actually just kind of prayed with me and Josue, and just that, you know, either a miracle would happen, or if not, that, you know, God would make sense of this to us at some point and give us peace through it, and, you know, the next morning I had my blood test, and the doctor confirmed that I was not pregnant, that the numbers were still not there. Um, it was still below one, so there was no possibility at this point. Um, I would have to have been at least a 30 at this point, if not much higher. So I was sad and I cried more, but I already had kind of gotten the worst of it over. So at that point, we, we kind of told all our friends who were really close to us um, and who were you know, kind of waiting because they still didn't know we were testing. Some of them knew we were testing early, but a lot of them didn't. So we kind of just started telling people because um, we knew a lot of people were waiting. And I think it was a day or two after that, I made it like an official social media post on my Instagram and Facebook because I know a lot of our family and friends follow our story through that. And I just didn't have it in me to like go around telling everybody that it failed. Um, so for that first few weeks after 
I cried a lot. Um, I still have moments where I'm crying about it, but not as much for several weeks though. I definitely like, I'd be fine. I'd be like, I'm okay. I totally trust that this is God's plan, which I do. <laughs> but then the next second I'd be triggered by something, you know, whether it be somebody, um, announcing a pregnancy or it be like something reminded me of like the plans we had made for these possible twin babies and that all of it was just gone like that. All the hopes, it would have been an eight year journey to do IVF and then several like near five, six month journey in IVF and it was just over. And there went all the money, there went all the emotions, all the time, everything was just gone. So I'm able to talk about it right now without like totally melting down because I've had time to process it and time to work through it. Um, it's, you know, it's been a month and a half. Is that right? December 12, January, February. Yeah, it's been almost two months really, um, since the transfer itself, but you know, a month and a half or so from the time that we like, I guess I'm not making numbers on exactly right, but <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Somewhere under just under two months, um, since we've processed all of this and, um, we kind of didn't know what to do next because honestly, we thought we were going to be done. You know, if this doesn't work, we're going to be done. But that was also originally said when we were thinking that we would um, have more than two frozen embryos. So we would have more times to kind of try the transfer. Um, but I was feeling right at first, like, I just don't want to do this again. I can't do this again. I don't want to do the shots. I don't want to do the emotion, the hope, and then have a possible failure. And then I started talk, uh, talking about adoption again, but wanting to consider maybe private or international. Um, and honestly, just going back and forth, back and forth. But, you know, the day, the, I believe it was the day that um, the second beta result came in, that my husband just spent some time, you know, um, praying, and he felt like God told him to be still. And I kind of, even though I wanted to, like, solve everything and kept talking about it, I ultimately knew that that's what God was saying too, to keep waiting and not to make any decisions yet. Um, and that there's, you know, a plan for this whole thing. So I kept waiting, kept waiting. And of course I've been just struggling going, any of my close friends know, cause I brought it up every chance I could, because I it's just like, tell me what to do. Do we adopt? Do we find money somehow to do IVF again? Because we don't have the money to do that. And you know, we could fundraise for adoption, but fundraising for IVF is a different thing. And I feel like that you can't do that. I don't know. So anyways, um, what I'm going to do is tell you guys what we have decided because we have made a decision about what's next. Um, and I'm really excited about it and I'm feeling so much more peace now. Um, all the kind of depression that I've been suffering with, is lifting and going away because I feel like not knowing what we were doing was really eating away at me. Um, and you know, I'm still, I still am sad about our embryos that we lost because, you know, we cherish them and, and even though we call them embryos, we also were really thinking of them as our babies, our children. And, um, so it's a weird place to be because you feel like you almost had a miscarriage, but it, isn't really a miscarriage and you don't really know how to feel and people who haven't been through it really don't know how to feel. You know, they were really sweet and loving and a lot of people called us and, you know, hugged us and prayed for us. And, but you know, then it was kind of over for them, you know, not in a mean way, but they were just kind of like, okay, it's been a week or two. Like they kind of have other things they're thinking about. And in my mind, of course, that's like, flooding my mind every second of the day of how this failed and what did I do wrong and you know um yeah so anyways I'm rambling and this is getting to be a really long video so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna record a video later hopefully tonight with my husband and we're gonna talk to you guys about what our plan is and we will post that video very soon for you guys um thanks for watching I appreciate all your support and prayers through this whole process I wish I had more exciting news for you and that I had worked and you know that everything was wonderful but um you know that's not how it played out 
but I also know a lot of amazing people here on this community on YouTube who've been posting their stories and have had multiple failed IUIs and IVFs and are still on the journey and some of them who've had that but have come out on the other end with children and um, you know we thankfully have our two boys that we we adopted and you know that helped a lot with the blow of it all because at least we still had our boys we still had our babies and um, you know we weren't childless we just never been able to conceive ourselves um, so you know it's really that's really helped us a lot but I will um, let you guys go for now and hopefully you guys can check out our next video hopefully I will be good and on top of it and post it in the next day or two all right guys thanks bye